Hello, everybody. We are live. Hey, man, I hope you're live. I hope you're living in God's will. I hope you're saved. You Got to be saved, man. You must be born again. This might be the night of the rapture. This might be the night of the rapture, man. First day of the eighth month. Bull, the bullseye. There's, there's no reason why it wouldn't be the night of the rapture other than God's perfect time that he's keeping hidden. He's keeping this hidden from the devil, man. Because remember, the devil is waiting to devour the man-child, but he was caught up. So I don't know how that works. I don't know the biblical science of all that. I don't know what that means, okay? But the Lord is preventing him from killing the child somehow by keeping this information from him. And he wants it so badly. I wish I knew their conversation. I wish I knew the deal and uh, the command from the Lord to the devil on this, man. That would be awesome. And uh, just praise God. So much going on in the world. We praise the Lord for your being here. Vondo! He says, man, you got to believe. You got to be saved. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to be saved. His finished work. Nothing you can do. It's all him. He did this for you as a free gift. Now, your portion of this whole thing is believing. Just believe that Jesus did it all. Don't try to add anything to it. Don't subtract anything from it. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The blood that he shed, he poured out every drop of his blood. I mean, he was brutalized, man. He was tortured. And he did it for you because of your sin. The father was angry. He was livid. He was in pure wrath against your sin upon his only begotten son, the innocent sweet lamb. Do you believe that? Do you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection? Do you believe that Jesus paid for your heaven in full with his shed blood, the redemption price, redeemed you, bought you back from the devil, from hell, from yourself, from the world, and set you free if you'll believe? Believe, man. Believe, believe, believe. Tonight might be the rapture. Uh, I ask so many people, if Christians, do you know what the rapture is? Um, uh, I say it's the time where God the Father, he evacuates his children just before he brings his judgment. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I know what that is. And I'm like, you really don't sound like you do know what it is, man. And the Christians have stopped preaching the truth of this because they have fallen in love with money and materialism and they're under a hex, they're under a spell and they have no clue that they're about to be wiped out. That's how beguiled they are. They have no clue. Americans have zero clue how much they are hated by everybody else on planet Earth. I mean hated. You ever left the country? You ever gone to Asia? You ever gone to Europe, Germany and all those places? Americans are hated, dude. Ever been to Brazil, South America, all those places? Americans are hated. You better come to know this. Get out of your hex. Get out of your lies. They're coming for you, man. God's coming for you, man. This is God's doing. He's put it in their heart to destroy you. Uh, Cush says they should be embarrassed on knowing the pure basics of Scripture. Yeah. Yeah, I'll... Christians don't even know the pure basics of Scripture. I mean, this is a major portion. This is God's heart. This is the fourth flame, okay, on the seven candlesticks. In order, we got to the fourth flame, and the fourth flame was already lit. It was the first one lit. Jesus Christ lighting the others, and he's included us in this, guys, his body. And now it's about to be ultimately fulfilled Oh, believe, 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 believe. Please, believe. We don't have much time left. Gary says, hey, fam, Maranatha. That means come get us, Lord. Come get us. And today's a great day for that, okay? There is nothing, nothing uh, that would, you know, that keeps us from believing that today, tonight's the deal. Now, our game plan, if the Lord doesn't rapture us tonight between now and midnight, we'll come back on again at midnight, Central Standard Time. And we'll welcome in 
the night. The it's the new month, the first day of the new month right now, and then it'll be we'll welcome in day number two. Okay, and uh, we're looking unto Jesus, and we're serious about that. We're serious about that. Time is clicking away, ticking away. God's angry. And uh, so, you know, in, in the news all around us, uh, hey, propaganda, by the way, guys, is pro-pagan. Duh. That's how you spell propaganda. It's pro-pagan all the way. It's to take the truth away from God and to make everybody believe the lie. Duh. Pro-pagan. Duh. Duh. That's what we have all around us, man. God's calling you on the truth. Do you like the truth enough to love the truth? Do you like the truth enough to believe the truth? Do you like the truth enough to say, hey, I want to know the truth, man. You guys keep all your lies. You keep all the garbage. You keep all the feces. And you give me truth, man. Amen. Um, 396 United States banks are going to close by December 15th. Why that date? Why? And they're all small town banks. From big banks, I mean, uh, Bank of America got a hundred and something banks closing. Wells Fargo got a bunch. They're out in the country because they can't, they claim they can't support them. They don't make enough money. They got to make in excess of four million dollars a year just to stay open, they say. I don't know anybody making that kind of money on the payroll, do you? These little banks? I know some small town bankers and they don't need four grand. That's what they're saying. And so they're going to close them all. You know, the banking side of it all is the satanic side of it all. The mammon side of it all. The antichrist side of it all. And they got to get rid of paper money and that's what they're doing. And we've been crying from the rooftops. The Bible's been crying it for 2,000 years itself. They're getting rid of fiat money, paper currency. It always fails. It always has failed, but that was the plan. You get something built up, built up, built up, and that U.S. dollar is numero uno in the world. So they could destroy it, and then boom, they could rise up and have the beast system, computerized, digitized money, until finally, after three and a half years of that, they're going to force you to get a chip in your hand or your forehead. And it's more than just a chip. It's more than just an ID card. It's more than just your banking info. It's got a DNA marker in it. And that DNA will infuse itself in you when Jesus Christ wanted to infuse you with his righteousness and make you a new creation in Christ Jesus, a born-again saint. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And the people who won't get saved, they'll get this mark. And it's a genetic marker. It's the genetics of Satan. And therefore, they cannot be saved. And that's what's coming up. And it's been in all these movies. And everybody's downplayed it and you know underplayed it and da, da, da. That's what it is. And just, that's why people cannot get saved once they get the thing. Because they're no longer human. They've become another species. They've added a little flavor to their DNA, rendering them non-human, non-salvageable, non-saving. Okay? Uh, Heather, propaganda, pro-pagan, duh. So true. I love it. Me too. Amen, says Kush. Amen, guys. I love you dearly. So, did y'all hear about the... Uh, National Christmas tree falling over. The National Christmas tree, a 40-foot Norway spruce, was blown over today by a 40-mile-an-hour wind. What's with those 40s? Bono says currently 89.8% .8 of the money in the United States is not in the form of cash. So only 10.2 is actual cash. How about that? Digitize money. It's all just on a computer. Numbers. Minusing numbers. Go go pay the bill. Go pay your house bill. Go pay rent. Go pay heat. And it just negates the numbers in your account. That's, that's all it is. Just numbers. And so what are they going to do when they unplug it and, and the power goes out? What's going to happen then? 
going to be some bad stuff. But the National Christmas Tree fell over today, guys. I'm saying the Lord's large and in charge of that. The Lord's giving a sign. Now, they may have a inside skinny. Hey, when the tree blows over, this is going to happen. This, this means that. Okay? They may be having some of that. But we know God's large and in charge. So you got to pay attention because God hates their Christmas tree. God hates Christmas trees. It's all about Satan. The Christmas tree is for Satan, for the Antichrist, not God. God hates that thing. Heather says, people have been programmed to accept the mark by paying with their smartwatch on their wrist. Happened to everything. Yeah, amen. Amen. And so this Christmas tree is over there laying on the ground. And they're supposed to have their official lighting come Thursday. And they're wondering, will it happen? They got it uprighted at 6 p.m. It took uh, it fell over at 1. Now, I want you to understand this. Why is this so important? Because Q's countdown clock stopped at 1 o'clock today, Eastern Standard Time, Washington, D.C. time. And at that moment, the cable snapped and the tree blew over in 40-mile-an-hour winds. The 40-foot-tall tree blew over in 40-mile-an-hour winds. Now, we all know that the number 40 means time of testing. Hey, Vinyl's got the story up here, Fox Fox Weather. And the Christmas tree falls, windy weather, Washington. So it's a 40-foot tree in a 40-mile-an-hour wind, and it blows over, topples over. At 1 o'clock, when Q's clock counted down. You go over and look at Q's clock now. They've added hours to it. 29 hours. And now it's within 24 hours, I think, 23 but they, they reset it when the tree fell. What's that about? I don't know, but they did. And it's, it's something we just, you know, in a factoid, take a little check mark and notice. Okay, that. That happened on this day, the 28th. The 28th of November. It's my mother-in-law's birthday today. Do any of you have, have a, a, a memory or something that pops up when you think of no, November 28th? Anybody? Kush says the black goo quantum tattoo sending and receiving data as it replicates and changes your chromosomes as your body acts as an antenna and battery. Mm hmm. And welcome that. Uh, oh, I can't even think of the name, guys. Graphene, graph, graphene oxide. Idiocracy, the future of America. All have a tattoo and their IQ is near zero. Yep. They water plants. With Bondo sports drink. Yeah, Bra Brondo sports drink and all the plants die, right? There might have been some people who got hurt during keeping it hush for now. So something's up, guys. Something's up, you know, and, and God. God hates the Christmas tree. God hates D.C. And when you look at the Christmas decorations, they all, oh, look at the White House decorations. I still don't see baby Jesus anywhere in all that decor. Because they hate him. God bless America. How long has it been since you've seen Jesus glorified there at the White House? Never? Me neither. Never. Never means never. Not at one time. I'll hear them say God once in a while, but they never bring glory to the only begotten son, Jesus Christ, whose name is above all names, the highest name of them all. They hate him. They hate him, man. Uh, Heather says, today's my mom's birthday. My parents' 45th anniversary. They got married on the 18th because they couldn't wait another day. <laughs> on, on her 18th birthday, her 18th birthday. She got married when she was 18 on today's date, 45. Graphene oxide on the money. That's it, man. Graphene oxide. And graphene oxide is particles all separated under themselves, nanoparticles, until a little bit of electricity or a charge or cell phone or something like that a microwave hits it boom and then it forms in its position it's supposed to be in an antenna amen so we got all that going on eyes open the 28th is huge to me one of the most devastating events of my life happened on this date and it was it was a crippler it it put me down for a long time and praise God, God healed me from it, man. He healed me through it mentally, spiritually, emotionally, 
everything. When I was 14 years old, and God just, but but he marked this date, and it was on a Sunday. Now, what are we getting at there? We know that God told us he's going to rapture the bride on the seventh day. The seventh day. And so when is the seventh day? Wednesday? And that would make Tuesday, or, or, or the, when is the first day? The first day of the week is going to be what? Wednesday? We've talked about this in the past based on timelines and numbers and things like that, just observing it. There's no coincidence, uh, coincidences. I know what's up with a tree falling over, but it reminds me of when the lightning bolt hit the Vatican. Yeah, when the new pope was being inaugurated. Right. And did you guys hear that he had the flu? The poor pope. Poor poo-poo. He, ha he had the flu flu. What a lie. What was that about? What kind of a ritual is that? Saying that even the Pope can get the flu and bless your little hearts when you get it and die from it? Oh, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Lies, lies, lies. They're all lies. Vatican lies. Final says, Jeremiah 10, 3. Listen to Jeremiah 10. God says, do not learn the way of the heathens. For the customs of the people are vain. For one, he'll cut down a tree in the middle of the forest and... Uh, work the handles of the workmen with the axe, and they deck it with silver. Boy, he went. He you went with the sixteen eleven King James on this one, dude. Uh, cut it out of the forest and work the uh, hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with copper. <laughs> Vondo, Vondo. He went straight up Saxton on me, man. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. Uh, that it moves not. That is hilarious, but it's true. It, it, it's a good passage. Read Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah 10, God hates the Christmas tree. He hates it with a passion. And they stand it upright like a palm tree and decorate it here with these silver and gold, like he says. And with a hammer and nails, they fasten it upright. Sound familiar, right? God hates the Christmas tree. Oh, Fondo, you're killing me, dude. You are killing me. All right, praise God. Uh, oh, Kush, 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 Kush. Oh, Kush, I missed it. Uh, oh, where did it go? Graphene oxide chemical structure is all the shape of a hexagram. Hello, hello. It's a hexagram, guys. The whole chemical structure. The Star of David, amen. That's the inside. The, the gram, uh, oh, the hexagram's the star, isn't it? Hexagon, hexagon's the inside, six-sided uh, shape. And then the star, I know you got me laughing, dude. That's what I needed tonight. Boy, did I have a rough day. Man, did I have a goofy day. But I praise God. Every time we get here, the Lord energizes me with you, my family, and I love it. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Uh, doesn't the Pope claim to be next to God? How can he get sick when he's just a man? Right, right, right. Isn't the poop supposed to be a God or something? <laughs> Fondo says the same thing. Aaron, love you guys. Love you too, buddy. So, so, so we got some, uh, propaganda going on, right? Kush, I love you too, bud. We got 396 banks closing. We got the Christmas tree falling over. Oh, and when I saw the news report, guys, at 7 p.m. Washington, D.C., it was 28 degrees. You know, like the date today, 28, 28. Now, I don't know what all that means, but it was. It, it was it was there right in front of me, and there was another checkmark note, 28 degrees. Uh, and then we got the Norway spruce. That's right next to Finland, isn't it? Isn't Norway next to Finland? Okay, just a note. Um. And then that countdown clock was reset at 1 o'clock. It was supposed to have stopped at 1 o'clock. The tree falls at 1 o'clock, and they reset it for another 29 hours, I think it was. And now it's down under 23 or whatever it is. All right. Um, oh, also, COP28. COP28 is about to start over in Dubai. There's that 28 again. I, I don't know what that's about, but today's the 28th, and we're going to stay up tonight. At midnight Central Standard, 1 a.m. Eastern, and just looking at it. Now, the Lord might rapture us between then and end. It's already night. 
He said he's going to rapture us at night. So it's night, and th then what do you do? I don't know. So we just wait on the Lord. Let him do his thing. He's going to do his thing and his timing. Amen. And you're part of that. And he's so excited. He's so excited to come get you, man. He's so excited. He wants it more than you do. And man, I want it bad. Me, me and I, we were talking. We just want to be raptured. Get me out of these bodies. Get me out of this world. These chemtrails. Guys, after a night's sleep, I got up today and I fought tiredness and wearisome. It was a battle all day long because I was huffing. I watched those planes fly over and they were spraying the raid version where it doesn't leave a long lasting chemtrail. It's meant to just drop down to where the people are. DC is filled with graven images and foreign gods of mythology, Zeus and all the, all the like. Exactly. You will not find Jesus anywhere in DC carved. You know, what, what they make Jesus look like and they say, hey, here's Jesus. Here's a sculpture. But you'll see all the other Parthenon of gods, man. You'll see them all over the place. All over the place. Gary says, amen. Vinyl says, same. Amen, guys. Amen, amen. I love y'all. So, COP28 starts. Guys, is that next week, Vondo? Is that next week? Um, it's the early part of December or something, I'm believing. Okay? And that's also during the, the wrong calendar's Hanukkah time. Okay, so, so all this stuff's going down all at the same time, and it's in Dubai. You guys know that Obama has an estate in Dubai? Y'all know that? Because he's going to need somewhere to go when Martha's Vineyard gets blown off the map and D.C. Right? I can't wait for God to pour out his justice. Oh, me too. Hey, guys, his incredible rage is with abortion and pedophilia he hates the innocent blood being shed, and he hates the little innocent ones being hurt and harmed by people who are supposed to protect them. And his vengeance is going to be so, it's going to seem like it's so over the top and so bad. And uh, it's just going to meet what it needs to meet. It's called justice. Okay, vinyl has got it right here. 2023 UN Climate Change Conference, these idiots. Okay, okay, okay. I'm glad he said that. From 30 November to 12 December in Dubai. Now check this out. Did you guys hear that the Secretary General of the United Nations just got back from Antarctica? And every time they take those leaders down there and show them stuff, they, they present the lie with them. Hey, there's your two sons. There are two sons that are shining 24 hours a day down there and you can see the other planets of Nibiru it's coming up from the bottom of the earth coming from that way bl keep blinding everybody okay and so that dude Vando can you tell me his name I can't think of his name from Portugal the Secretary General of the United Nations well he gets up right when he gets back and he's talking climate change this and overheating and the waters are going to be up I think he said 10 meters, which means 30 feet on all the coastlines. See, they were telling us the same thing at the 2012 Olympics. I think that was 2012 in Brazil, wasn't it, guys? And they showed that 20-minute film just before it all started and showed... Vody Bachman says human babies are evil. They are small because if not, they would kill their children. This guy's an idiot. What he means by that, guys, is the Calvinists believe that... Uh, God only saves a few people. The rest are meant to, to die and go to hell. Okay, This is absolutely in opposition to the Bible and the character of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. He loves everybody. He wants everybody saved. Okay, And when you see him butchering folks in the Bible, it's because they're not humans. And you got to come to understand this. He loves humans. He became a human. He died for humans. All right? And so he these, these Calvinists get up and say, Everybody is a murderer in their hearts. They're all evil. And the, and the reason God made babies small is because otherwise they would just slaughter their parents. It's like, you idiot, you idiot, you fool, you idiot. <sighs> the reason God made babies babies and small is to show us what innocence really looks like, guys. And this is who Jesus remained. Even as a 33 and a half year old man, he was as innocent as a baby, sinless, without flaw. Mm, death penalty, 
to those who hurt children, they should be cast in the sea. Antonio Guterres, I forget how to say his name. I've heard it, but is the current Secretary General of the United Nations. He's the ninth Secretary General. Guys, nine. That's the month we're in. November is nine. November means the end at the end of the line because after nine, you start with zero again and come back around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. End, the end, the end, and then you start back with zero again. Okay? It also means judgment. Nine means judgment. And he's been placed here as who he is to fill a role, to fill a seat. And the United Nations is going down. And then Obama will rise up and he, the Bible code tells us, oh, dude, 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 dude. Who is that guy from West Virginia that tells the news? Uh, I can't think of his name, but he's dabbling with the Bible code right now. It's like, dude, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. But anyway, that just come across my mind just thinking about it. And he's he was sharing that today. And I'm like, dude, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Because these guys don't know what's going on. They don't know the parameters. They don't know what a good Bible code looks like. They don't know what a bad Bible code looks like. Okay. Now, if you're familiar with Sean's, you know what a good Bible code looks like. Okay. That 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 is a real Bible code, God says. Amen. Uh, seen the fully black-eyed newborn Nephilim babies? Yes, 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 yes. Seen those. The black-eyed children, there's a bunch of them. They're now in their 30s. The black-eyed children, when they were first mentioned, they, they, they're all over, they were all over California, Colorado, the big major cities, Denver and all that. And they would come knocking on your door or they would see you out in public. And if they touched you and if you welcomed them, you're under their cursings. Okay, the black-eyed children. Uh, you can look at uh, L.A. Marzuli and his studies on that and his videos and his presentations on that. They are freak children. They are non-human guys made in laboratories. Uh, I will repost here after broadcast uh, Chris from Rapture Watchers. Yeah, yeah, that's him. And dude, dude, yeah, Chris from Rapture Watchers is his channel. I mean, he's come around. His doctrine has changed so much since he first started, and he's really, for by grace are you saved through faith now. He, he believes the gospel side of it all. He presents the gospel side of it all. Once saved, always saved, if truly saved. And he was praising Robert Breaker for teaching him a lot about dispensationalism. And when you learn the dispensations, so much of the Bible comes true, and it's so good. And then he's talking about doing these Bible codes. I'm like, dude, you, you better check check with the master on this. Matter of fact, uh, let's see here. So, so climate change is their big talk. And every time somebody comes back, the major players come back. Remember back there, dude, was it 2015, guys? 2015, when everybody was going down there, when the Pope went down there and they made right a 1,000-year beef that they had with the Russian Orthodox? And then they were like hugging each other, no, kumbaya, and everybody was going down there. The senators, everybody. I think it was 2015, going down to Antarctica, and they were showing them all this planetary system that's coming in to judge the world. And oh, climate change, climate change. And that's what they're talking about. It's not climate change. It's God coming to judge and kill you. Okay, he's going to heat things up. But it ain't climate. It's just a system of God orbiting Earth. And it'll, it'll leave. It's, it's not going to do nothing you can do. Carbon. They talk about, oh, the carbon signature. We've got we to stop carbon. That means you got to stop breathing. Do you guys know that one poof of a volcano, I'm not talking about a massive explosion. I'm not, I'm not talking Mount St. Helens. Just a poof is more than one years of exhaling for all the humans on planet Earth. And God's about to open up a bunch of those volcanoes. We're told that in the Bible. Amen. Only uh, Prob Chris promotes a lot of heretics. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to promote heretics, guys. Amen. But that really caught me off guard right there. I'm like, dude, don't be doing that. Uh, his second term, the Secretary General of the United Nations, this Antonio fella, his second term ends in December of 26. Okay, so we're going to see Obama slowly rise up because the 
Bible codes say this, Secretary General of the UN. It specifically says that Obama's going to be that. He's coming up through the ranks. He's going to be the top dog in the world. How will Obama, uh, his evil team, and the 200 million man army survive the six seal earth flip? A two million man army will be inside the earth when it flips. They're waiting for the, the man with the key to be released, and he's got the key to the bottomless pit, and then he'll release him. Obama, his six seal, he might be up on a spaceship. He might be orbiting the earth when that happens. Okay? And many people have water vessels under the water. Okay? And if you're out there in the middle of the sea, it won't make that big of a difference, say some. But uh, they'll be hidden, probably, probably outer space. And you guys know at this rapture, guys, there's going to be the most incredible earthquake then. And that's not even any of the judgments. There's going to be a massive earthquake at the rapture. And it's going to startle everybody and wake everybody up when those graves break loose and all the dead in Christ come back to life. Amen? And it will be a serious, not, not some, you know, little tremor. It's going to be a magnanimous earthquake. It's going to rock the world. Praise God for the Holy Spirit giving us discernment so we can rightly divide and not fall for all the nonsense all around us. Praise God, guys. You must be born again. That's what we were saying the other night. You know, we want you reading the Bible. We want you reading 10 to 20 chapters every day for your goodness sake, for your relationship with the Lord, for your hearing His voice, learning how to discern His voice. But there's many people who read a lot of Bible every day. The Perry Stones, the John Hagees, and that whole bunch over there. Uh, Chris LaSalle, that guy can quote you more scripture than all of us watching right now can quote combined. But he's lost as hell. He's a heretic. That dude uh, uh, out of uh, Arkansas, he could quote some scriptures, but he's burning in hell right now. Dr. Heiser, that guy could quote scripture, studied scripture, wrote scripture, talked about it in his books, and he, he was surprised as hell to wake up in hell, the Bible code tells us. Okay? You must be born again. That's why Vino starts every night with you must be born again. And then we encourage you to read 10 to 20 chapters every day. Get it in order. Um, Vino says, dumbs and knowing which side of the earth to be on. That's exactly right, man. That's exactly right. Because that earth is going to flip. It's going to wobble. And they got all their science at work. They got all their science at work. Arnold Murray. That's him. Uh, Chris doesn't know that Barry Awe is a terror, but he is saved. Some who uh, are saved think Prince Charles is the Antichrist. Yeah, and, and that dude from France, they've all got it wrong, guys. And, and they all, and, and Chris, I just roll my eyes at that guy, giving out the news, and, and he's sharing everything. And, and what we're waiting for is that rapture's coming next, guys. And okay, that's right. And then that Ezekiel 38 war with Psalm 83, and that's all wrong. Ezekiel 38 and Psalm 83 are the same war spoken by two different angles, at two different angles. H half of that crowd is coming for one purpose, and the other half is coming for another purpose. Does that have to be two different wars? Nope. God just lets us in on what's going on and what their what their reasoning is for being there. Remember, they're they're all brought there up by a hex. Obama, the Pope, and the devil work up a hex, a spell, a witch's spell, a wizard spell that brings everybody in. Okay? They're all under a hex. And they all come for different reasons. Praise God, says Gary. Good evening, my family. Love you. Just arrived from work. Had 30-minute Bible study to the family of the Philippines. Praise God. That's our Philippine sister. And she speaks the same language my wife does uh, from Mindanao, Messiah. And so we thank God for that. You know what? Sean has put up a new code. Let's go look at that thing. I've not looked at it. I want to look at that. Let's talk about that brand new code. Okay, dude. I don't know what's going on and why I can't make this thing small. There we go. All right, let's go see what he has to say because what he's got to say is pretty dang cool. All right. 
All right, this is pretty cool looking. Let's see what it says. Brand new code from, guys, what, 30 minutes ago? Let me hit that refresh button and see what happens there. All right, so all the news is kind of, what? What? Come on, dude. What? The setups. Everything is the setup, man. All right. How does the lizard people fit in? It's part of the royal family. Uh, Nephilim. They're all Nephilim. And Vondo has put the link up here, guys. Oh, you're old ancient English, Vondo. Good night, bro. That's my bub there. Come on, people. Chuck, Zero, Elon. Obviously evil. Obama's a smooth-talking wolf. He has so much of the church duped with his schmoozing. Yeah, no kidding. So gross. All right, let's look at this thing. 44 minutes ago. That's what it says. I just refreshed it. It says 44 minutes ago. Sean, oh, here's what he says. Let's listen to what he has to say. Bible codes unsealed is God's voice, the thunder of God. Hallelujah. The rest of them aren't. Chris, do not dabble where you shouldn't be, dude. And surely don't watch Glazers and those guys build a code. Okay? Jonathan Matthew Wright, don't watch any of those guys or, or his team. Okay. 2 Samuel 22, 1 to 20. Okay, here's some good Bible reading. We're about to read 20 verses. Y'all ready? Amen. Okay. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, the God of, of my rock. In him will I trust. He's my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. When the waves of death, what? Y'all hear what I'm hearing? It's 20 hours. When the waves of death compass me, that means encircle me, that means I, they're all around me, I can't get away from them. When the waves of death compass me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compass me about. The snares, <laughs> Fondo, Fondo, I'm thinking about the ancient English here, dude. Help me, I gotta get away from that. Praise God. Because this, this verse here is powerful. This verse here came to us in that ancient English. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, when the ways of death compass me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compass me about. So we, this writer is encircled with everything. Death, demons, water, waves, destruction coming at him, man. And he's needing the Lord. We all need the Lord. Amen. Waves of death is a tsunami. Amen, Rex. The ungodly men... The, the waves of death compassed me about. The floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. And he did hear my voice out of the temple. And my cry did enter into his ears. Aren't you thankful when that happens, guys? When you're in trouble and you cry out and you know it, your voice made its way to his ears. And when it makes its way to his ears, it makes its way to his heart. Amen? Because we are his little ones. We are his innocent ones. He's made innocent, right? We were filthy. We were dirty. We were sinners. And we believed in Jesus. And he made us and declared us innocent and righteous. And when we call out to him that way, saved in the name of Jesus, the character of Jesus, the true Jesus of the Bible, had another lady talking to me today about her op uh, her opposing friends who are Calvinist, who want everybody to be lost and only a few are going to heaven. And, and what the Calvinists teach, guys, is that God predestined before he ever made the world that most of his creation would go to hell and only a few would be saved and believe in him. And you can't be saved even if you want to be saved if you've been assigned for hell. I mean, how stupid is that? God is not willing that anybody goes to hell. He's not willing, willing that anybody perish, but that all should come to repentance, that all should have everlasting life. That's his will. Predestination, guys, is this. God said, before he ever made the world, he said, I'm going to make myself available to everybody. I want everybody saved. Whosoever, 
Whosoever believeth in my Son, Jesus Christ, shall not perish in hell, but they will have everlasting life. That was his game plan. That was his wonderful, awesome war plan against the devil. And then he said this, And whosoever believes, they will be predestined to be adopted into my glory from their human status, from their broke down vehicles to one that shares in my glory. Just like the one Jesus Christ has, they are predestined to have that body. Everybody who believes, you're predestined to be glorified. That's what that means. And that's what it says in the scriptures. Amen. Gary says, Calvinists hate John 3.16. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the entire world. That, that means the hu humanity, the humans in the world. Okay, He hates the world ways. He hates Satan's ways. He hates the, um, you know, the pull of the world. Satan, sin, death, all that. But he loves the world population, the earthlings. That he gave his only begotten son as a gift, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish in hell, but they could have everlasting life in heaven. Amen. Amen. Let's continue reading our passage here. This is an excellent portion. The sorrows of hell encircled me. They compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, that's Jehovah, and cried unto my God, and he did, he, he, he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry entered into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook. Because he was angry, he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also. Amen. That is in context with the rest of Paul's doctrine. Amen. Amen. Rick says, Beaver Moon tonight, an aquatic mammal who builds a lodge, a chamber, and he hides in it during the long, harsh winter. The tribulation is that long, harsh winter, and we will be saved. The spring, summer harvest will have gone to our chambers, have gone to our grain bin in the sky. God will have saved us from the long, harsh winter, and that's what a beaver does. He builds him a dam. And he gets elevated off of the water, though he swims in the water, to keep him warm and to keep him protected during the winter months. Amen. Good word. Hey, Garris. Hey, family, God bless you all in Jesus' name. Praying for all of you. What a blessing to be learning the heart of God with you all. Amen. Praying for you, Garris. Love you, dude. Love you big time. Yeah, the description of predestination. That's the context with Paul's doctrine. Amen. God predetermined everybody who would believe in Jesus Christ to have glorified bodies. Hallelujah. All right. Continuing on. God's anger. He heard my cry in his temple, and he is angry. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and a fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet, and he rode a cherub. It's a type of an angel, a guardian, powerful angel. And he rode the cherub. That's how God chooses to get around. Okay? He's not, he's everywhere. He's spirit. He's everywhere. But he's giving us the picture of what he does and how powerful his angels are and how he always uses messengers. God doesn't have to have the first angel or the first you, but he's chosen to have both and he wants to use you to the maximum. For your, for your sake, for your blessing, okay? And why don't you go ahead and determine you're going to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you're going to love your neighbor as yourself. And you're going to give God every bit of you. We don't have much time left. Give him your all now. And God says when you do that, he'll redeem the time. He'll buy back all your wasted years and make it as though you have done that for the Lord. If you'll do that for the Lord now, okay? We encourage you to do that. God wants to bless you. Okay. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind, and he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Though the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled, the Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, and he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. Hmm. 
Ace Frehley had a new song come out just today, and he's still wearing that lightning bolt on his shirt. He's pro-Satan. He was the guitarist for Kiss. He's pro-Satan, pro-Obama. I saw Obama fall like lightning from heaven. I saw Satan fall like Obama. Barack Obama. Amen. And so here it is, and God's arrows are, he's going to be using Russia's arrows, and he's going to be using Iran's arrows, and he's going to be using North Korea. The rocket man, he's going to use his arrows, the rockets, for his destruction. He's going to be doing that. And he sent out arrows, and he scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared. The foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord. At the blast of his breath of his nostrils, he sent from above. He took me, drew me out of many waters. You ready for the rapture? You ready to be saved from those waters that the East Coast won't be saved from? Unless they're saved? Amen. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me. So we got all these arrows. God's talking about this Poseidon, guys. Did you have ears to hear what this conversation is? Now, this was written back there in Samuel's day while Saul and David were king. But God's eternal, and God knows what he's talking about. And he says one thing right here, meaning, you know, your bow and arrow. And then he also means it for your day and my day, the future. The word of God is always at work. It never gets old. It's only said, oh, that's an old archaic book by retards who never read it who don't know what they're talking about, and they surely don't know what it's talking about. We encourage you to know what the Bible's talking about, and God is up to date. He's beyond up to date. He's still waiting for you to catch up with him in the future. It's already over for him. It's already happened, and he writes Bible prophecy in past tense, historical. This happened and this happened. And what? He did, delivered me out of my distress, out of the water? That hadn't happened yet, has it? It has to him, and it ha has to you and I who walk in faith Praise God, brother. I know the Lord inclines his ear into our prayers. I thank you so much. There's so much more peace in my home lately. Praise the Lord. God is so wonderful to us. Dude, that's some great news, man. Uh, I sing 2 Samuel 21. Wow. Praise God. This whole passage here, right? So much easier to memorize God's word when it is sung in worship and reverence. Amen, amen, amen. Good stuff. So here's God. Hey, Everybody who reads the Bible, it's for you now. Just find out, hear what the Spirit's saying to you. You're the church. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're the church. You're the body of the head. Jesus is the head of the church, and we're the body of the church connected to the head. The Holy Spirit of God is inside of us, and he's teaching us things always. So don't just prowl through your 20 chapters to get them done. Hear his voice in the process. Listen to the Holy Spirit of God and do what he's teaching you, all right? And uh, stop and write notes, just like our brother Ben did yesterday when he got to that passage. Amen. So God, he's angry. He comes down to, to uh, defend us, the innocent ones, the aborted ones, all the people, the little children who are being abused, and those of us who've been made innocent by the blood of the Lamb. He's going to save us, evacuate us from all of his judgment coming, his arrows. His death, the blast of his breath and his nostrils that he sent from above. He took me and Moses, guys, Moses, he drew me out of waters. That's what Moses means, drawn out. Okay? So we got Samuel pointing to Moses, and we got Samuel pointing to Sean, who's Moses. Me, 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 me here, and you and I are represented in that me. Me too. Me three. Amen? Amen. He took me and drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord, he was my stay. He brought me forth into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Guys, be saved and let the Lord delight in you. What does the Bible say? Until you're saved, you are not in his delight. You are out there in his wrath. But in his wrath, he's being merciful and he's saying, get to the cross. If you'll get to the cross, 
That's where you'll find my delight, and I will delight in you because you have delighted in my son, my gift. God has given us a free gift, and it cost his son everything. It cost him his life. For salvation, you don't do anything. Jesus, it, that was the life of Jesus that did that for you. And then after you believe that and you become God's delight, then you come to him and just encourage him in that light and say, now, I want to be your disciple. I want to love you back. And now I'm going to give you my life. Not in death, but a living sacrifice. So salvation cost God his life. Discipleship cost you yours and you still get to live. But yet not I, it's Christ Jesus who lives in me. Amen. Poseidon, God of the sea, carried a trident, a three-pronged arrow. Y'all go real quick and get an aerial view of where John F. Kennedy was killed this month, 60 years ago, this month. He was killed on a road that is a trident, and it's the exact-looking trident, the 19, that goes across each side on those twin towers that fell. Trident, 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 the devil's pitchfork, Poseidon, New York City and Dallas. Faith is the only way to please God. Without it, you can't please him, man. Amen? Amen. So that passage, read it again and again and again. It'll encourage your soul. And here's the code. I'm excited to read this. I've not read it yet. They distorted the sender. Therefore, behold the voice of my words. This thunders of God. Uh, they distorted God. God is the sender. Okay, he sends the Bible code. He sends the messages. He sends the thunder and he sends them to shun. And all these other guys, they distort it. I say, oh, this is of God. This is the Bible code. This is, what does it say? They distorted, they, the other Bible code guys, distort the sender. Because of that, behold, the voice of my words, this thunder of God. Check out this thunder of God. Check out Sean Mitchell's thunder, the real thunder, the real codes. Man, Chris needs to hear this. Let's get that to him, Kush. You will deliver the message, Sean Mitchell, Moses, Elijah, the olive trees. Elijah reveals the prophetic truth. Everything was validated. Sean's codes are legit and everybody else's are not. That's what God's saying to us right now. You know, validating. He's putting his stamp of approval on Sean Mitchell, Elijah, Moses. Everybody else distorted what the sender said. God's the sender of the message. It's his word in his dialect. And everybody else distorts it. And Chris will too. Chris will too, man. We got to keep him from doing this. They distorted the sender. Therefore, behold the voice of my words. This thunder of God, you will deliver the message. Sean Mitchell, Moses, Elijah, the olive trees. Elijah reveals the prophetic truth. Everything was validated. The little book reveals Obama. Nobody else does. Everybody else, my buddy reading the King James, 66 books of the most awesome, powerful fire of God. And you can't have the Bible code without those 66 books. But he won't believe that God is big enough to have a message within the message. And because of that, he's not even sure that the, the Antichrist could be living yet, that even be born. And he's not even sure that we might be at the end just yet or not. Because the King James didn't tell him that. That's what he says. I, I, didn't, I don't have that in the King James, so I'm not going to preach it. Well, if you would trust God that he's bigger than a king in England, And believe that he has a word encoded within the word because he's that big. And he's always required two witnesses. And he's got the two witnesses right here in writing. He's got it for you and I who can read it in the plain text. And he's got it for the computer who brings it to us in his dialect, God's dialect. Incredible mathematics. Ingenious skipping codes. Ba, 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 that nobody could do until a computer come along for those of us at the end of the days when it was unsealed. Daniel, it's not for you, dude. You'll never get this. This is for the people of the end, the time of the end. 
and it will be unsealed. And you and I have been revealed the unsealed. And we find out that Sean is the guy who's legit, who worked out, who sifted out, who found God's word in this thing. And everybody else are distorting the cinder. Messing it up, getting it wrong, lying. Uh, they listen to the devil. He's the master of distortion, right? God's delight is what I want to be. Me too, buddy. Me too, Brent. That's what I want to be. Heather says, fools, God will not be mocked. Playing with God's fire codes is dangerous business. People have been killed for much, much less than that. Amen? Amen. Good word, sister. All right. So, he continues on. The glory of God and the light from the lampstands to destroy Obama. And that's what we were getting at. You won't find Obama, Barack Obama, in the plain text, but you will if you're reading Luke in the Hebrew. Barack Obama. It's right there. I saw Satan, Barack Obama, fall like lightning. And that's what Ace Freely still has on his shirt. AC, DC, all of them still have a lightning bolt. Shazam, satanic. Satan worshiping fools who love the one who fell like lightning from heaven. You know, like this tree fell today. And you guys know what the tree represents, right? That part of Satan. <laughs> and so God has given us a hundred and what? 60, 70 codes on Obama telling us who he is. He's the Antichrist. The word within the word, that's how we got this thing undistorted, untouched, unmessed up. I love this code, Sean. This is excellent. Revelation 10, 9. This is John, the apostle, talking here. And I went to the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said to me, take it and eat it up. And it shall be, it shall make thy belly bitter and it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Amen. Let's go over this code again without the distortion, okay? I won't read that long 2 Samuel 22 passage, but man, read that 2 Samuel 22 passage, will you? Amen. And 2 Samuel, guys, is the uh, 10th book of the Bible. That means something to the Lord. 10 is a wonderful number. It is 7 plus 3. Perfection, perfect perfection, plus God the Trinity. Awesome perfection. And he used 2 Samuel to be the 10th book of the Bible. Pretty interesting. Do they have the spirit of error since they mock and distort God's Bible codes? Yes. Yes. They have the spirit of um, usurping. Usurping. God's man. God's way. God's will. They want to dabble in the Bible code and don't even know Hebrew and Aramaic. That's like trying to cook with no fire. And it's cooking with the wrong fire because God is that fire. They're messing with fire. And they will get smoked, man. They don't have much time left, though. Pride, they are stepping out of line. God chooses whom he chooses. And he chose Sean. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. All else is error. And that's what God's telling us. Let's go ahead and look at this again. From the top, Sean says, Bible codes unsealed is God's voice. The thunder of God. Hallelujah. Then we got that 2 Samuel 22 passage. Read it. Hide it in your heart. Sing it like Sister Heather has said. Just familiarize yourself with it over and over. And it's talking about right now. The rapture and the devastation that happens simultaneously with it. Those babies have been crying. That's the voice that came into his ears in the temple. And he's raged. The little children crying out, Lord, help me. All these slaves in China and these communistic countries who are in jail, they've heard, he has heard their cry and he's coming to deliver. Just like children of Israel, when Moses was drawn out, he's about to draw Moses out. Sean is Moses. He's about to draw him out in rapture. You and I, he's our representation of that. We're all, everybody who's a believer is going to be saved and drawn out and saved by God before he brings his wrath on this earth. And here's the code. They distorted the cinder. Therefore, behold the voice of my words. This thunder of God. These Bible codes of Sean. You will deliver the message 
Sean Mitchell, Moses, Elijah, the olive trees. Elijah reveals the prophetic truth. Everything was validated. The little book reveals Obama. The plain text doesn't. It kind of hints around there's a guy, there's an Assyrian, you know. This tells us who he is. And that's what God's saying. It's important that you know this. The little book reveals Obama, the glory of God and the light from the lampstands to destroy Obama. Name, name, name. There he is. And all these pastors are in trouble. All these deacons are in trouble. All these people who are in charge of these groups on Facebook are in trouble. They scoff and they mock and they laugh or they try to do it and they bastardize God's truth. They distort his word, his power, his fire. Translation again, and we'll call it a night until midnight. Hope to see you there. By God's grace, man, unless the Lord's raptured us already, I'm ready to be called out. He's heard my cry in the temple. Lord God, save us. Get us out of here, please. Save these babies. Lord, save these babies. Save these innocent ones. Save these people who are being tortured in Pakistan. I got photographs. I see these people. Lord, save them. He hears our cry. He's about to come do that. Man, I feel privileged to be a part of this family. Praise God. Me too, bro. Dude, dude, dude. Me too. And I am so thankful you're my brothers and sisters. I love having brothers and sisters of faith like this. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, all glory to God. Translation. They distorted the sender. Therefore, behold the voice of my words, this thunder of God. You will deliver the message, Sean Mitchell, Moses, Elijah, the olive trees. Elijah reveals the prophetic truth. Everything was validated. The little book reveals Obama, the glory of God, and the light from the lampstands to destroy Obama. Amen. Amen. And this code is in the book. Okay, this code is in the book. It's in the table of contents, 438, with the aliens. Because there are some folks out there, Sitchin and others, who say the Bible codes came from the aliens. <clears throat> removing God's glory, removing his beauty, his fire, his thunder. Amen. You guys know that Sean just found this code today. And this wasn't planned at all. Y'all think that was a little bit of fire up in that? A little bit of truth up in that? A little bit of something that needed to be preached tonight? I mean, just with hearing Chris today say what he said and then God bringing us this right on top of it. Unheard, unread, unsaid, man. Praise God. God's timing is impeccable. Amen. Website and BCU book uploaded. Download the latest, guys. Praise God, Vinyl. Thank you, sir. The website and BCU book uploaded. Amen. I love all my brothers and sisters on here. I do too, buddy. I do too, Brent. I'm glad God brought you our way. Amen. We love our brother, Sean. Pray for him. Pray for one another. Thank you, Vondo, for all your work. Kush, everybody, Heather, all you guys, man. Brother George. And the list goes on. The list goes on. Lindy, I mean everybody, all you guys. Praise the Lord for you. Be faithful, remain faithful, and by His grace, we'll see you at midnight Central Standard Time, 1 a.m. Eastern. Okay? Thank you, Brother Sean. This code is fire from God. It surely is, sister. Surely is. Let's pray. Lord, you're so awesome. Thank you for your wonderful, impeccable timing. It's your signature. It's your signature. Your word for now, needed now. I pray that you'll get this to Chris's ears and have him stop doing what he's doing, dabbling with the devil, distorting your word. I pray for everybody here that you'll help us to finish well, to finish strong, to walk in your holiness, to walk in your fire, to walk in love, to walk in your fruit, to walk in your gifts, and to walk together in unity. And we, that's all we desire, Lord, to please you here at the end. I pray for anybody that's not saved. 
that you will draw them, Holy Spirit. Draw them in to, to believe before the destruction comes. And anybody who doesn't get saved before the rapture, who has listened to our Bible studies here, who has seen the codes, I pray you'll preserve them one last time in your mercy, in your wrath, remember your mercy, and save them. And may they call out to your name, Jesus, save me, Jesus of Nazareth, I believe now, save me. Because <clears throat> we sure would want them in heaven with us too. We're not willing that anybody perish and go to hell, but that all would come to repentance. Your will is our will. We want that, and we pray that. I pray for everybody here who is saved that we will continue to grow in grace and mercy and mature. Help us all to get to that father stage as fast as possible and help others be able to counsel, be able to answer, be able to help out in every way that we can. And we just thank you. I thank you for uh, Sean and just bless him with good health. Bless him with his mind and sharpen him and keep bringing him the joy of these codes. And I thank you for that. And thank you for every brother and sister here. And uh, we just bless your name. We praise you. Uh, bring us back safely tonight at midnight, unless you're going to rapture us. That would be better than I know. We praise you and glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen guys. Love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sean. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Johnny Boy, encouraging us. Amen. Maranatha. Amen, says Dylan. Guys, I love you. And by his grace, we'll see you in... Three and a half hours. Love you.